coming up on this episode of Belief Hole. My sisters had confessed after strange things kept happening. They had played with the board, and I seen the old lady. She started coming towards me, but here's the kicker. She was crawling down the wall. Yeah. The idea that it's, yeah, it came through a Ouija board could be a different entity or something using that tragic energy to reform itself in this other house following those girls. Who knows, man? Creepy, 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 creepy. About the third house on the left was a triangular-shaped UFO. There was a second one hovering just above the treetop on Cedar Avenue. Yeah. Hovering over someone's house, right above the ham radio antenna, is just an eerie visual. And the fact that there were two there and they were just sitting above people's homes. <laughs> it's super creepy to think about. Is this an abduction scenario this guy happens to come upon? For some reason, they're not cloaked completely. He can make out the outline. Creepy. Yeah. Very creepy. Also reminds me of hippos. Sure. Out of that darkness, the Grim Reaper appeared. Full body cloak. Scythe. The whole nine yards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Pretty creepy. The fact that he put his hand on his mom, it's a nice touch. Yeah, it's almost like there's a familiarity there. Like, he knows everybody. Yeah. He's like, how's mom doing? I can just so visualize it in my yeah. head, like, just coming out, you know, with his scythe or whatever it is. Weird, too, that he says it was like a calming feeling. Sort of how, like, a mosquito oh, numbs you. That, like an anesthetic. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't there to, you know, take your soul away. <laughs> That always reminds me of like angels, going back to angels again. These kind of descriptions of entities that aren't born, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you need nipples and navels when you're born. You mm-hmm. need the, to connect you to your mother and to... If you're a mammal. Yeah, if you're a mammal. Why do you need nipples? To feed your young. Oh, you're talking about a female. Yeah, yeah. We have no use for our nipples. It is odd. Yeah. I mean, you could tell like yeah, there's a cold breeze. I'm not a fan of Maybe some men dig it. Anyway. My nipples. Although it would look weird if we didn't have them. <laughs> exactly. Like not having eyebrows. Okay, now let me, this is my point. <laughs> Conspiracy. Synchronicity. Sasquatch. Homunculus. Alien races. Satanism in Hollywood. MK Ultra. Tartaria. There's like a whole, I've been watching this one guy. Like, Close the door, in. Jury. Close your door. What's the, uh... Inner Earth Disagreements. Ghost Dad. <laughs> I like that movie. Dogman. Bohemian Grove. Corey Feldman. Magicians are demons. Spectres. Spirits. Spirits. Sleep paralysis. Strange disappearances. Sky whale phenomena. Yes. Alternative history. Shadow people. Shh, quiet, I'm trying to say words with the mouth. It's getting dicey out there. Poltergeists. That's cool. Anunnaki. What is the moon? <laughs> Elf towers. I would never talk about it. That's old. Y2K. Cover-ups. Apocalyptic catastrophe. Vampire. Well, hello, hello. We are back. We're back. It feels good. <laughs> feels really good. We missed you guys. You guys need new chairs, though. But, yeah. They're sitting in lawn chairs right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I feel very relaxed, but uncomfortable. We took the good chairs to your house so yes. we could do a live stream and look cool. Yes, any of you guys who participate in the live stream or saw the replay, it's available now. If you want to check it out, subscribe to our YouTube, smash that like button, leave your comments in the comments below. Yes! Uh, we had our nice chairs there. And now we don't have them here, so... They're kind of a pain to move, so now they have lawn chairs. But Daddy Big Boy has still has the big chair. That's how John is referring to himself now. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be a great episode, guys. Coming back with listener stories, uh, we've got so many great listener stories. A mile-long list. Pretty creepy ones. Yeah. Well, at least the one. You know the one. Oh, I know the one. We were talking about before the show. I don't think I've seen any of the other ones yet, but... You're talking about the Grim Reaper. An actual account. Yeah, I've never heard of an actual Grim Reaper account. I always thought it was just made up, but... Maybe there's some validity to it. Of course, you have the folklore. You have references back to like uh, the Saturn symbolism. Traditionally, like Saturn is depicted with the reaper or the 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 sign. Yeah, sickle. Father Time. Like these are all kind of similar archetypes, I guess you could say, of the the Scream Reaper death, the, the bringer of the end. This just came in right before the show. If we had more time, I'm sure we could find corroborating accounts of Grim Reaper. But yeah, I swear I've heard stories about that. Oh yeah, they're out there for sure. But yeah, it is a weird. I, I like it because it, it'd be like witnessing bizarre accounts of Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. <laughs> like we're. Uh, I feel like a little bit more. Well, it's more supernatural, terrifying, darker. Well, and also I just think that there's probably more legitimacy to. Oh, I don't for know, sure, I don't know why, no, for sure. You are gonna die, right? But Santa Claus, more likely. 
I just Less like likely. I like that it's a, tr- a traditional figure yeah. that we have like in society, and I mean everyone kind of goes, oh, great. that's obviously like a cartoon idea. Right. I just like the idea that it could be real. Yeah, there's something about that supernatural visage that. Well, I wonder if it got started maybe by people who had brushes with near death like this guy did. Yeah. Oh, and definitely. Then maybe they had tales that that's how it started. Like I saw this person with a. Yeah. With well, a, even with, with the a Sith. Is that what it's Scythe? Called? Scythe? I don't know. <laughs> uh, even with the, the near-death experience episodes we did, some of the darker stories that we didn't really cover, but there were stories of what would look like a Grim Reaper just without his, you know, his device. His device? What do you, yeah, what do you, you mean? know, the, the sickle thing. But I was thinking, what could that be for? Last night I was kind of thinking, oh, well, we've done episodes on out-of-body experiences, the silver cord. What if it's just like a little... Like uh, an astral yeah. cord? Slitter. For those that don't know, the silver cord is supposed to, yeah link your body with your astral self, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that would... This is not an impossible thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, in the whole, it seems likely. Yeah. No, it's definitely... I thought it was more to like cut your head off, but that doesn't make sense because... (laughs) You're already dead. (laughs) This is just a whole swath of people with their heads removed. I don't know. It just seems like a cool prop. Yeah. Definitely impressive. Maybe he's a really nice guy and he just does it to like... Might just keep you from running, like as a soul. Like you see that, you're like, okay, what do you need me to do? Well, we'll get to that story. and Then we might have an idea of what his purpose is. We have some great stories coming up, we guys. We do. We don't just have old Grim Reaper. We've got some awesome sky triangle crafts. We've got a Ouija woman walking down walls. We've got fluid beings in the forest. What? And a lot more. Okay, you said so many things there that just made me go, what? Woman walking down walls, fluid All beings. true accounts. All true. True as these people's word is. Huh? True as, <laughs> as these people's word is. There oh, that's is. what he's you learning. <laughs> he's learning. True as people's word is. Is that what I said? Yeah. Twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, no, like their word. Oh, true as their word. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes some sense. True okay. as their word is. True as people's word is. It just sounds... Dislocated, it sounds like a very odd phrase. Yeah, I like it though. It, it does make sense though, right? Mm-hmm. Believable podcast, true as people word is. No, I said true as people, as they're, it's hard. It's <laughs> maybe probably not the best way to say that, but true as the, as the people, as the, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> as true as their word is. Right. Sounds legit. Yeah, and I believe them. I know what I want. You listeners are going to get to decide, do you believe them? Yes. I, I personally do. You left out a fantastic story we have that's actually going to take us into the expansion from Bailey Baumberger. Oh, that's right. It's about a winged creature encounter. Those are always fun. Really, really interesting. Um, it's a basically a flying humanoid in Missouri. And if you ever want to find a freaking flying humanoid, you go to Missouri. <laughs> Really? As much as you hear about the Chicago sightings, Illinois. Right, Mothman. Yeah. Looking for corroboration for her story, I found oddly similar stories in that area around the same time describing unique features that she saw with her low-flying humanoid over her vehicle as she was driving. So that's going to be a fascinating story, and it ties into the expansion, which is about, well, it's the butterfly people. Oh. The butterfly people of Joplin, Missouri. Cool. And John's going to be excited because it involves tornadoes. Oh no. Your favorite. I know. You love NATOs. I had a dream about a NATO. Last night? A couple nights ago. What happened? I was out running the day before. I was running and I was, got really far away and then I saw these menacing looking storm clouds. He just sounded like someone's child. He was running, he had gotten really far away. And far then... away from my home. And uh, and I looked at my radar and I saw this like tornado oh, red cloud. It's terrifying. And so I sprinted back like two miles. It was really hard. And then I had a dream that night about, you know, a tornado. That's freaky, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. Planted that in you. It makes sense. The um, expansion, I knew you'd enjoy it because I've gathered a few clips and a couple of them are from Storm Chasers from the actual Joplin tornado. Do you remember that story? Joplin, Missouri, this town was decimated. It sounds familiar. Yeah, pretty tragic. It was an F5. At one point, it became an F5. Went right through town, six mile long trail of damage. But I think it was on the ground for 22 miles, mile wide. God, can you imagine a mile wide tornado? I think it killed like 160 some people. It was about 150, 160, I believe. Sad. 
what's really interesting is what happens when this tornado comes is all these children claim that they saw these butterfly people that rescued them. Oh, right, yeah. Saved them. And so that's going to be fascinating. What's interesting, too, is the adults didn't see them, but the adults couldn't explain some of the things that happened. Like a truck was coming to slam right in them and then seemed to halt in midair or get pushed to the side right before it hit. And the kid would say, Mommy, weren't their wings beautiful? Maybe they're like angels. It's also like this is the heart of the Bible Belt. Some okay. people refer to it as the buckle of the Bible Belt. So obviously a lot of them refer to them as angels, right. but some of them refer to them as this kind of separate phenomenon. Huh. But it's fascinating. No, that does sound pretty interesting. Yeah, some of them even sounded like fairy representation. Sounds like we got some good ones today. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. And I just want to say what's crazy, and the reason we got into that is because Bailey mentions that because she looked up later flying humanoids in Joplin is where she had her experience and she came across the butterfly. Oh, people. Yeah. So she suggested I look into that and it's it's fascinating. It ties in. and But beyond that, it's like there's the separate flying humanoid type thing that's a little more earthy, a little more primordial and I think creepy. Cool. But we'll get into it. It's going to be fascinating. Let's get it on. Yeah, a little roar in there. All right, guys, shall we begin with a fluid being in the forest? Yes. I don't know what that means though. Oh, you'll find out. Like a water looking. Um, it's more like a glimmer man, really. Like an elemental. Or a glimmer being. Okay. Like we've covered. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. The storm's getting closer. <laughs> I didn't like the ending of that first one. It got cut off. It did get cut off. The file got truncated. Good word. Thank you. Florid. Huh? Florid. Do you know what florid means? Florid. <laughs> it means unnaturally red. Oh. Like the man's face was florid. Is this your daily word yes. thing? <laughs> word of the day. You know what laconic means? Yeah, we already talked about that for about 10 minutes on a show. Uh-uh. This season, yeah. I don't think we talked about laconic. Laconic, yeah. Because we talked about uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, the Spartans. It was a great conversation, but we had it. Dictum. Mm-hmm. We, that, that was, was the, the last, last episode. episode. <laughs> you guys got to read that memory book that I'm reading. I will. It's insane. Like, you can remember anything. You didn't remember that we had both of those conversations. Well, that's before he got the memory book. That's true. Now he remembers everything. <laughs> It takes practice, but the tricks that I've learned are very effective. Yeah. What's the memory book called? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> we'll have it in the show. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> something simple. It's not like an interesting, it's like expand your memory or something uh, like that. Everyone who's about to buy it is just like, well, that's just like it's working. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny. All righty. Well, let's jump into the stories. I'm sorry for delaying. All right. Let's get into it. Fluid Being in the Forest by Shannon Wellington. I've been hunting the Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania since I was 12. My grandfather had a camp there. One year back, in the early 90s, we were all up for opening day of buck season. We always went spotting the night before for something to do. I was around 14 years old at the time, and so were two of my cousins. My uncle and an older cousin took us spotting at night around the area. They rode up front of the truck and us three kids rode in the back. We pulled into a gravel pit, which had a high bank on the backside, about 15 to 20 feet up on a slope. We usually see deer when we pull in, so I was looking through the cab of the truck, and each cousin was looking out the backside windows, looking forward. In the headlights, I seen what was about four or five feet in length and maybe a foot around, almost cylindrical in shape, but was fluid-like. It looked like the alien in the movie The Abyss. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like Glimmer Man sort of stuff to me. Oh, the shimmery, kind Mm -hmm. of translucent. It shot up the bank on an angle and then back down, then back up and was gone. I came back inside the truck bed, just as both cousins did almost simultaneously. We all looked at each other and said, did you see that? We all seen the same thing at three different angles, but later when we asked our uncle and cousin who were sitting up front, they said they hadn't seen anything. None of us could figure out what we saw. Later on, a few years ago, we were on our way up to camp. We were listening to Coast to Coast when we heard David Polites on talking about Missing 4 and 1. He talked about the predator in the woods segment that Jan McAbee saw in Ohio while hunting and it sent chills down my spine, as it felt like the same thing I saw many years ago. 
I thought that was a good story to start with. Just bizarre. Yeah. We covered, remember Jan's story? Mm -hmm. The story where she's hunting and she sees this thing moving from tree to tree, this big blur of an object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glimmer Man. Yeah. Just another Glimmer Man account. I feel like they're getting more prevalent, common. I mean, it ties in with so many things. It just makes sense to me that that's definitely something possibly out there. People going missing, stories of seeing things in the forest. I mean, it could be me Bigfoot, just, you know, cloaking up. Cloaking up. Cloaking up. Can I read the next one? Absolutely, John. All right. This one is called Ouija Woman in the Hall. <laughs> no, thank you. I want to start off by saying my name is Chris Curtis, and I'm from McEwen, Tennessee. I was probably six or seven years old when I lived in an apartment with my mom and stepdad every other weekend with my two sisters. Well, one weekend I was over, my sisters kept bugging me to swap rooms. They kept getting scared in their bedroom, said they seen a lady walk out of the closet and down the hall. Well, they made me switch with them. I never had a problem with that bedroom until the night the tornado alarms were going off, which is a horrifying sound. Yeah. I went to go down the hall to my parents in the living room, and there she was, blocking me. She started coming towards me, but here's the kicker. She was crawling down the wall. Yikes. I screamed and cried. I still see it vividly to this day, and I'm now 23. I wouldn't stay there no more after that. When they moved, come to find out an old lady had died and the place caught on fire. Maybe it was her, but I don't know. That is terrifying. Dude. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't think about this the first time I read Chris's story, but if it was potentially the woman that had died there, mm -hmm. it would make sense that there's a tornado alarm going off. So emergency, disaster. Wouldn't it trigger the fire? You know, the, the death and the fire. Another disaster taking place. I mean, the tornado, like, you know that. Is that what you're... So there's multiple tornadoes? I didn't know. Uh, this is what's weird. There's a couple in here that happen to somehow involve a reference to tornado. This oh, is how our Listener Stories episodes always unfold. They seem to bring in stories that are somehow interconnected, like they were meant to be joined. Little motifs. Synchronicity. Exactly. That's weird, though. So this next part's interesting, and it gives some background on potentially how this all started. Maybe what opened a corridor for the spirit to come through, and it might not have been the woman that died in that fire. About a year or two before I saw the old woman, we had rented an old house in the middle of town, and that's where my sisters played with the Ouija board. At night, shadows would go across the wall and my doorknobs would turn and click. I had a set of old army men. They were metal, and one night, they vanished into thin air. My sisters had confessed after strange things kept happening that they had played with the board and my mom was kind of mad about it. But we packed and moved into the apartment, and that's when it sort of followed us there. But it didn't mess with me, and I seen the old lady, and it must have stayed because of my ex-girlfriend had a friend that lived there after, and she had strange lights in her room, and doors would open and close, but she never seen anything or anyone. Creepy. It's interesting because in that story, you find out the background that his sisters were the ones that were playing with this Ouija board. And then later in that next place, they're the ones who were being petrified every night by the yeah. spirit. So it's as if it left him alone because he hadn't maybe drawn it out. Possibly. You turned my thought about the story because initially I was thinking, well, firstly, I'll never look at a scene in one of those cheesy horror movies where something climbing up the wall and think <laughs> right. that's dumb. Ridiculous. I will never look at that and think that now. I'll think, well, this guy actually saw something climbing up the wall. So that's kind of extra creepy and weird. Yeah. And the idea of, like you said, the storm maybe triggering an echo of the event of her death, replaying that, allowing that to come through, you know, the urgency of that moment, triggering that energy, right? And then, then you see the recreation of kind of, or a version of that, this thing trying, and when she, I wonder if she was trying to get away crawling up the wall, because that made me think that like if there's a fire, like you're thinking I need to just get up and get out and yeah. even in a supernatural kind of way. That, but then the idea that it's, yeah, it came through a Ouija board, it could be a different entity or something using that tragic memory or tragic energy to reform itself in this other house following those girls. Who knows, man? So I guess at the end of this, because I asked him, John, you're always curious to know these things. How did it end? The woman's climbing down the wall, but the account was missing. 
where did it go? So I made sure to reach out to him. He said, it seemed to scurry off into his parents' bedroom. <laughs> what? It was the first door on the right. Ugh. It was blocking him at first and then it went. Can you imagine being like one of his parents and hearing that later? Yeah. Pretty terrifying. I'm glad the activity stopped, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you're free from wall crawling women in your life. Yeah. This next story is pretty fascinating. Oh, this is the Grim Reaper. This is um, Glimpse of the Reaper. <laughs> So this story comes to us from James Malone Jr. And this is a fascinating story. This is very unique. So this occurred in Wyandotte, Michigan, which is just south of Detroit. And it happened at the Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital. This is a story. When I was 21 years old, I needed surgery for a bilateral hernia. I had the surgery on a Thursday. And that following Sunday, I wasn't feeling well. I was in a lot of pain, very clammy, couldn't sleep. And from above my belly button down to my knees, I was red and radiating heat. I was taken to the hospital and they said I had a bad infection. They gave me three antibiotics and morphine. As soon as they administered the morphine, it felt like someone had dug a large knife in my lower ribs on my left side. I turned to my mom, who was in the corner of the room and told her I was dying. As I said this, that very corner right behind my mom grew extremely dark. Out of that darkness, the Grim Reaper appeared. Full body cloak, scythe, the whole nine yards. He placed his hand on my mom's shoulder, stared at me for a few seconds, shook his head, then slid right back into the corner and disappeared. It felt so real and very terrifying. After that, they discovered I had a blood clot in my lung and told me if I didn't go to the hospital when I did, I would not have woken up in the morning. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Just wanted to share the experience with you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty creepy. The fact that he put his hand on his mom, that's pretty... Yeah, that's it's just a like, nice touch. It, it, yeah, it's almost like there's a familiarity there. Like, he knows everybody. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's your mom. How's I mean, mom I could, doing? I can just so visualize it in my yeah. head, like just coming out, you know, with this Sith and just like putting his hand on hey, his man. mom's shoulder. And he just shakes his head like it's not, <laughs> not quite not your, your time. time. <laughs> and then just slinks back away. Well, yeah, it's interesting. He He's feeling he's going to die. He looks at his mom. He's like, mom, I'm going to die. I wonder if he was picking up the... Mr. Grimm was about to show up. Mm -hmm. Like, so he felt that presence of death and he's like, mom, I'm about to die. Comes through the wall and then he's like taking in the situation. He's like, not quite yet. And that part where he would have died because of that clot in mm -hmm. his lung, had he not come in, maybe Grim Reaper didn't get the message that he had come into the hospital. So things were going to be fine. Like while he was traveling, I don't know. But it's yeah, really, really unique story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to follow up with him because it is quite terrifying on the face of it. I asked him, did, did you feel like a sinisterness or an, or an evil energy? Did you get this sort of malevolent, like it wanted to take your soul or something, like in a negative way? And thank God his response was, <laughs> I would say he seemed to be doing his job, but didn't go through with it. I wasn't totally terrified until I took the time to think of it a few days later while I was still in the hospital. At the time of seeing him, it almost seemed like it was a calming, quiet feeling. When he went back into the corner, that's when reality seemed to return. It's definitely something I don't want to experience anytime soon. Yeah, so it seemed like he became scared after the fact, thinking back on it. Right. Which yeah. is what happens a well, lot. it's weird, too, that he says it was like a calming feeling. Uh-huh. Sort of how, like, a mosquito Oh, numbs I was just thinking you. that, like an anesthetic. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't there to, you know, take your soul <laughs> John, away. I like that. It's a creepy idea. <laughs> it's calming you. Yeah, he's like, it's okay. As he, like, wraps you in his spider web, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's like he has just a calming presence, mm -hmm. so you don't fight so you run it, away. Well, it's like the E.T. phenomenon, the abduction phenomenon, same idea. And we'll have those but coming those are, up. Those are generally more scary than this, I feel yeah. like. Just because maybe they're not as good with the anesthetic. <laughs> I swear I've heard accounts similar to this before with a Grim Reaper-style entity coming to take somebody and where the visage was sort of terrifying, the energy of it wasn't. Yeah. Like it's just something part of reality, part mm -hmm. of our life experience, this transition state where you just have I mean, the it's the Sith that is the most scary, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the Scythe or whatever it is. Blade thingy is really there. It, it serves a function. It's not to intimidate or right. scare. It could be like an I mean, astral. I don't know, but. It could be in the astral sense, physical, like a physically cut the astral cord, right. you know? Well, yeah, and if you listen to accounts of near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences, that plane, that astral plane is actually pretty physical. As in like when you're there, there is physical elements yeah. to it. And it is connected to this physical realm in where if you have something happen to your astral body here, It'll manifest some way in the physical form, and you might not be able to understand why something has happened to oh, body. Oh, or... creepy. 
But I was just I was gonna play this real quick. It is Scythe. <sighs> scythe. Scared me. <laughs> so <laughs> Sorry. where that came from. <laughs> so so it is scythe. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you for that story. Very unique. That was terrific. Yeah, that was a good addition. I was gonna mention the anesthetic idea. It's just weird these synchronicities because later in Bailey's story with the winged creature that flies over her truck, mm-hmm. she said she should have been terrified, but for some reason when she looked at it, this giant monster that she saw flying over her car. Is it a monster? I, I thought mean, it was a fairy winged creature. No, no, that's a different that's in Joplin where she was. Other reports during the tornado were like rescuing. That's type in the figures. expansion. There's another thing. Hers sounds almost more like definitely earthly, definitely like physical uh-huh. humanoid, winged humanoid creature. Oh, okay. But we'll get into the way she describes. One of the things she said is like she, instead of looking up at this thing and, and seeing and being terrified, she felt like she was telepathically calmed, almost like she was looking at like a field of cows. Like it was that calm and just like, oh, that always calms there it me. goes. And then she didn't like, <laughs> I think later on she realized how freaky it was. But in the time she said she felt like the thing almost maybe had calmed her. Like, don't freak out. It's just a weird kind of synchronicity yeah, with your story. It's like a reverse low frequency, what's the, the large cats use? Infrasound. Like a reverse the infrasound. Yeah. yeah. Instead of terrifying you, it calms you. Maybe it was a Grim Reaper in a squirrel suit. All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> what a dumb comment. You know what I'm saying? Because Grim Reaper had the thing where he could, could call me. All like right, it's Jeremy. The same, it's the same uh, Etsy in a different outfit. Let's take God. that speculation back a little. I thought this would be a good time to do our first speak pipe. Ooh, let's do. And this comes from a familiar voice, Simon Von Elk. Simon Von Elk. Simon, it's been a while, sir. Uh, And this account's really fascinating. He has some that we have in the archive. By the way, guys, archive uh, should be live and active and growing by the time of this episode drops. So feel free to send in your stories. We'll have them on the archive and then many of them will end up on the air. We're developing quite the collection. We could probably write a book at this point. Mm Mm-hmm. That's in the plans. It's going to be really fun, guys. Definitely check out our website. By the time this is out, we will have the Listener Stories blog live. We're going to be slowly adding more and more stories, but Mm -hmm. it's going to be a really cool place to go and gather stories. It'll be cool because you'll be able to search within categories. If you want to find stories that seem like other ones, you have your own account. You want to see if anybody else has had an account similar to yours, you'll be able to go on our site and kind of map it out. We also have uh, DJ Benson Stinger. Awesome. He'll be excited for that. Yes. Little Deej. All right. So let's do Red Hand Summon. Submitted by Simon Von Elk. This is a really fascinating account. Very unique. We got some really unique ones this time. Red Hand Summoned. So I tend to move around a lot, but right now my girlfriend and I uh, and our dog are staying on Martha's Vineyard. And we're staying in a loft kind of space. And... um, The bed is just, you know, downstairs, just sort of in the big open room. And um, in the ceiling, there's these uh, skylights. A lot of times I'll, you know, look out at the moon or whatever through the trees and the skylights. So it's kind of got like a little bit of a creepy vibe at night. But, you know, we've been here for a few months and and it's pretty normal. Um, But there was one night where... You know, I'm sleeping like you do. And I don't know why, but I suddenly just wake up. (laughs) Like really suddenly. And I'm completely alert. And my eyes just opened like wide. Which normally I'm groggy or whatever. But this time it was like crystal clear. And floating above my head is like a, I don't know how to describe it other than, it's like a wireframe hand that's red. And it's poised over me in such a way that I got the sensation that it was like casting a spell or something. And it was just like sticking out of nothingness. That's weird. And... The second that I saw it, it was like it retreated. It noticed that I saw it, and it retreated through, I don't know, like a slit in in reality, or just like pulled back through like the, the veil, so to speak. It was terrifying. I don't really know what it was. It definitely looked extra dimensional. It didn't look like a human hand. It looked more like... Um, 
you know, like a 3D render almost, or almost like a 3D printed hand, uh, but weird. Maybe made of energy or something. Um, and uh, anyway, scared the shit out of me. Had a hard time going back to sleep that night. Couldn't sleep very well for the following nights. But that that one was very strange and stuck out to me as kind of like a a what the fuck thing. Because I mean, I've heard a lot about paranormal stuff, but nothing like that. So don't know what it was. But uh, enjoy the story. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. It's interesting because we've heard of this before, the disembodied hand phenomenon. Yeah. Manifesting. Like this was big in Victorian times. Victorian With physical era. mediumship What's that and stuff. show that where the little hand walk around? Adam's Family? Yeah. Was yeah. it Adam's Family? Was it Thing or It? Thing. <laughs> one of them. One thing. of those guys. Thing, you're a handful. That was always weirded me out seeing. Because I always thought like there's an actor moving his hand around. You know, the snap. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Good show. Poor Christina Ricci. You know, she got typecast after that. That's true. Because she was kind of a odd little kid playing Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Anyway, these disembodied hands, right? So common thing. I remember when he first sent this in, I found something specifically. I was trying to find like red disembodied hands. Mm -hmm. But it does remind me of like the Skull Project when they used to do these spirit readings or mediumship. Yeah, disembodied hands are one of the most common phenomena that occurs during physical mediumship Mm -hmm. sessions or seances. And there's some discussion about because there's only so much energy you can put in to manifest into this reality. So right. the hand is something that you might want to do because it's somewhat useful and recognizable. Yeah, imagine if you just put in your elbow, like that was the energy you had. and you couldn't, <laughs> Wait, is that, is that a butt? Couldn't do anything with it? <laughs> is that a butt? <laughs> but yeah, with Simon's account, it's uniquely strange because it is red and wireframey right. and almost like a simulation well, sort of. Well, you said the reason why you called it Red Hand Summon was because you thought it sounded almost like witchcraft. Well, he said the way it was positioned or poised above him was in such a way that it made him feel like it was casting a spell, which I thought definitely yeah. interesting comment to make. Well, it reminds me of, the, I remember hearing these stories and I always wanted to do an episode on this. I know like the witchcraft thing, like people are touchy about it. Like, hey, don't misrepresent witches today, which I get. But there used to be, you would have like uh, covens, if you want to call them, or small organizations in maybe early colonial days. Mm-hmm. You'd have your midwives in his way of life for spiritual energetic protection, but also just natural protection. I remember hearing the story well, herbs of, too, just herb work. Yeah, it just, was looked on as It was as kind life. of mixed yeah. together. But I remember specifically the story about these kind of warring covens. They would battle energetically and send... Oh, this sounds familiar. Send yeah. entities or spirits, demons to do their bidding against the other coven. And one coven was able to capture it and turn it back on the other coven and destroyed it. And these are like old, old stories. I'm rubber, your glue, whatever bounces off me <laughs> sticks to you. Whatever demons bounce off me sticks to you. It does work kind of Not that you're cursed, Simon, or there's anyone after you, but the idea of like this hand coming out of the nothingness and then right. slowly slivering away, maybe it was the wrong guy. Kind of like the Grim Reaper story. Yeah. Or probably because he woke up and you noticed it. He's like, I don't want to get, get out of here. Can't be caught. But yeah, and especially in shamanistic practices all around the world, using entities to do your bidding on an astral level or something, that's really common. I mean, there's a lot more, I think, pushback on that when it comes to, you know, witches from the 15th, 16th century. But in shamanistic practices, that's pretty common. They really? have a lot of Native American traditions too. Are you an expert on this? I'm an expert. <laughs> okay, next one is another clip. Uh, this comes from Shane, and I call it, It Drew Him to the Pregnant Hill. Hey there, buddies. Um, I <laughs> wanted to speak about hey, Shane. an instance that I had when I was about 12 to 13 years old. I grew up in New Mexico. I still live here. The house I grew up in was a single story home with a window right next to my bed, which is going to play into the story. One night, I remember having this crazy dream where I went to this park. Um, We all called this park Pregnant Park because there was a giant hill just in the middle of it that resembled a pregnant woman. (laughs) So um, anyway, in my dream, I remember walking to the very top of this park on that hill. And I don't know, the best way I could describe it is the sound like kind of like a foghorn slash bass blast. Really like the sounds they created.
crafts were making in that War of the Worlds movie, and there was a bright light. And I just remember feeling like, not scared, but just like happy. And Weird. I wake up from this dream with my dad coming into my bedroom asking if I had just snuck out. And I asked, no, why? And he said he heard my window slam. And then he got up and came and checked on me. And again, the weirdest thing was I live on a single story home with the window right next to my bed. I actually didn't have a screen on that window because I think I did use it to get in and out a couple times. But anyway, everything about that just felt extremely real. I do remember that bright light and the real visceral feeling of just the foghorn slash bass blast just louder than anything I've ever heard just encompassing me. And again, like I wasn't scared. Um, I wasn't worried. I felt almost happy. That's just the weirdest shit ever. (laughs) <laughs> it's definitely weird, man. I'm yeah, like, I thank you, Shane. That weirdest shit ever. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a great clip. You got to pull that. Yeah, crazy story. So, yeah, it's super interesting. Could it be a dream? Well, what brings it home is the fact that when he's woken up, or what feels like woken up from this, it's his dad running in saying, right. "Did you just go outside? Your window just slammed shut." Right. So that I think to me is a sort of a damning part well, of the experience. It's not a hundred percent certain, but it definitely adds some interesting flavor. Yeah, especially since it felt so real to him. I mean. Mm-hmm. So was the implication there then that something was coming into the room? Well, he had left. They brought him through the window or something. His dream anyway was that he was up on Pregnant Hill looking up at this craft and then all of a sudden he wakes up after the, the so thing slam. Something maybe brought him back. Brought him back. Oh, that's, that's interesting. It, it really interesting idea. And well, the other reason why I thought this would work so well is we have another clip I'm going to play. And remember that bass mm-hmm. that he reports? Yeah. That strange bass that, that was affecting him comes through the next story pretty intensely. It protrudes. It protrudes like a pregnant park. It engenders itself. Nice, John. Yeah, you're doing good with this book. I I'm love like- the sm- <laughs> these gr- like smirks you have after you say one of these words. It's great. <laughs> Exceptional work. Shall we play the corresponding uh, speak pipe we got? Here we go. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Ryan. I'm from Missouri. Uh, I've been listening to you guys since the beginning, and uh, with all this UFO talk lately, I thought I'd share my little story I had of uh, when I thought I saw a UFO. It's probably like 15 years ago. We had just moved into a new house. And it was probably about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I got uh, woke up by... I didn't hear anything, but it was almost like I felt something, almost like a vibration or like some kind of, you know, like a drumming or something like that. And I remember waking up and for whatever reason, I felt like I just needed to look outside. And whenever I looked outside, passing above our house was a large triangle shaped something it was really dark outside it was really overcast but you could see like the outline of something going along it's huge the only thing i can compare it to that uh, i'm from kansas city is uh, like arrowhead stadium or like coffin stadium it's massive like something that big passing over like i said it was almost like you could feel it in your chest almost like bass as it was going over and uh it's crazy. Yeah. You know, I remember seeing that and saying like, well, you know, that was, I don't know what that was. So I went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, uh, you know, my parents were talking about it. They thought there was like an earthquake or something. Uh, not a big one, but, you know, sometimes you get those miniature earthquakes that kind of just barely shake the house. And, you know, they're talking about how they thought something like that had happened because they felt like their bed was shaking and it's kind of like what I was describing that I felt that made me like get out of bed. So yeah, that was kind of weird. I didn't do any research into it. See if anybody else seen it. I didn't really think too much of it until recently whenever all this talk, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thanks. 
Oh, thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Again, that's such a common thing, that triangle craft that's almost the same color as the sky, just like a dark mat, mm -hmm. almost invisible, but just enough that you can notice it's blocking out stars. Phoenix Lights was a lot like that. I feel like the, um, if you guys remember the pyramid UFO episode we did recently, mm -hmm. remember that weird one that was kind of hard to believe because it was the kid had this battle with this translucent kind of, he thought was an alien, and it, like he went to stab it and he stabbed his knee, and then he was taken to the hospital. I don't remember this. You don't remember this? No. This is like the end of the Pyramid UFO story. <laughs> really? We were all kind of like, this is a little out there. I mean, obviously, but the interesting thing was, I think he described it as, it was obviously a pyramid, so triangular shaped, floating over the house, dark as the sky, vibration. Yeah. I remember that being a specific thing. It is weird. That guy might've been a little psychotic just with the way his story went. Mm -hmm. Just like that. But uh, <laughs> those interesting connective attributes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's so Nodes common. Nodes of truth. Nodes of truth. And when we get back from the break, I did find so many corroborating accounts we're just going to do too. But in Independence, Missouri, where this account happened, where uh, Ryan had his experience and so many similar attributes. <laughs> <laughs> Live mouth sound effects. This is very good. I'm trying to do the bass. Oh, sounds like a didgeridoo. Good. Yeah, it sounds a little like a didgeridoo. We should become monks. We should become professional UFO sound makers. I think there's a lot of call for that right now. Let's try another one. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Whoa. What are you, what are you doing, doing, man? It's a different kind of UFO. No, no that's, that's just obnoxious. Do you want to do another just regular basic? I think basic we're done. One? I think we should take a break. Okay, yeah, we're taking a break. Way well, to ruin it. I thought it was a Jeremy the Ruiner. Going in a unique direction. Jeremy the Ruiner. <laughs> the terrible nickname. That's his ancient god name, Jeremy the Ruiner. Actually, that sounds kind of threatening. That is But when you terrifying. put Jeremy in front of it, it doesn't have a whole lot <laughs> Especially of... Especially like an ancient god with yeah. that name. <laughs> Jeremy the Ruiner. <laughs> the ancient... And this is the god Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> it's such like a modern... I always used to think of like Jeremy. My first girlfriend's sister always called me Germ. It's cute. Germ. In an endearing way. It wasn't like I was dirty. Well, let's take a break. When we get back, we're going to do a corroboration of Ryan's account and then Jeremy, right? We're getting into Bailey's. Jeremy, the ruiner. We're going to get into mm -hmm. Bailey's flying humanoid stuff, yeah. right? What's on the expansion docket? So as I referenced earlier, it's going to piggyback off of Bailey's encounter because we are going to get into some weird humanoid, uh, flying humanoids in the expansion, but it ties in with these butterfly people saw and the experience in Joplin. The tragedy that happened there, the twister that killed 160 plus people, awful homes, buildings destroyed, totally erased this town. But you had all these weird stories of these children witnessing what they called the butterfly people. And some people refer to them as angels. But we'll get into that. That'd be a cool little documentary to do. Oh, for sure. And what's fascinating too is it's obviously tied to this real life tragedy and that connects to obviously Mothman with the- uh, Oh, bridge collapse. Yeah, the, the bridge, bridge. The Silver Bridge. Silver Bridge, yeah. yeah. That collapse, and then there are all these other Mothman sightings I'd never heard of, or winged creature sightings. There's a bunch. Chernobyl, supposedly? 9-11, mm -hmm. supposedly there were sightings of a winged creature, a harbinger. So whether it's a harbinger or an angelic savior, whatever these things are, maybe there's different maybe entities. they're fighting each other. Maybe they're fighting, maybe some are darker, maybe some are feeding off the energy and some are there to prevent it. Who knows? But we're going to get into it. It's going to be really interesting and I'm excited for it. So guys, if you're not an expansion member yet, come on over to Bleeful.com, hit that expansion button and sign up. Five bucks a month, you get double the content, double the episodes. Double your pleasure, double your fun. I think we have like 40 plus episodes there now of full content, just like our regular episodes. So if you guys dig this, you want to support us, sign up there. We'd love to have you. All right. We'll see you in a bit. I do, I do, it's all real. They're outside no right- No one's available to take your call, but you can leave what? your story at the sound what? of the tone. No, 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 they're, they're outside right now, they're outside! No! Do you have a spooky story? Don't wait until it's too late. Give us a call, beliefhole.com. Welcome back. Hi. Hello. You have some corroborative accounts, right? Yeah. Corroborative. A lot. I mean, there's a lot going on in Missouri. Yes, there is. That's so weird, man, because that's my focus for 
Bailey's story for all the expansion is Missouri. So I want to do some corroboration around Ryan's account. These are some accounts of triangular craft in Missouri around the same time period, roughly. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. This first one, this occurred in 2011 on January 9th, about four years prior to Ryan's experience in the same town, Independence. Oh, dude, 2011 in Missouri? Mm -hmm. That's when the Joplin uh, tornado hit. Really? Yeah. I have a weird story about Missouri. You do? I don't want to share it though right now. When did you go to Missouri? It was last night when I was out. It's, it's kind when of you were weird. out, when you went to Missouri? No, <laughs> there was a quite a drive. There was a girl down at Miller Dome that is from Missouri. Oh, what a synchronicity! That's crazy. what is going on with but Missouri. Then it gets weirder. Like I, I'm working on the Ruger film. Yeah, and for some reason I got Mississippi and Missouri. Oh yeah, mixed up in my head, and I was like, are there bayous there? And this lady <laughs> behind her started cracking up. <laughs> and she's like, did you even go to school? Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? Really? And she just went, I was just like, well, you are the rudest person I've ever met. <laughs> I was like, "You're what are you doing? And she was just like pointing at me and live. It was the weirdest are you serious? situation. Wow. Did you hit her? <laughs> no, but it, it, it pissed me off. She was being so rude. Yeah, that's funny. Shitty. It was just out of nowhere. And uh, anyways, that's my Missouri story. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I, I didn't want to say it because I. Oh, that was great. My story. geography was. It was hey, you embarrassing. Know, I thought New England was a state. We all thought New England was a state. Mm -hmm. growing I up. admittedly am not good with you. I just. I mean, yeah, fascinated by regions of the world now. But when I was younger, it didn't click. Yeah, there, I didn't have anything to you know stick in my head or yeah. like you know I just never experienced it. It wasn't well, that interesting. If they to had me. talked about fascinating, strange accounts right, in yeah, different places, I would have been different. all about geography. Now I love it. We also we weren't taught like what I love about like New Orleans and the Bayou, the different the culture, the culture so interesting the yeah. landscape but when you're looking at a map with shapes and dots yeah you were just it's told, not that interesting no. you were just told what year it became a state yeah, yeah it's you just know? straight memorization that's why i think chris and i thought growing up that new england was a state yes. did you know do you think that growing up yes you think that now still <laughs> maybe <laughs> this is something about northwest high school so this is the thing this is my defense for that new england is not a state it's a group of states right. in the northeast it's like maine massachusetts rhode island yeah but Growing up, when you learn all the states and you hear New England it's reference like all the time, Midwest or something, yeah, but you never hear anyone say when you're talking about all the states and people reference New England and it sounds like a state, like New Hampshire, New right. North Carolina, New Jersey. No one tells you, by the way, New England not being a state. You know, no one says New England the region. They just say New England when they're referencing an area up in. So you just assume it's like New York. It's, it's just, like New Hampshire. That's my defense. It's one of those things that you kind of have to infer. I've never been there either. I had no. Like, That's the one area of the country I've never been. Yeah, I've, I've been up to Maine. I'd love to go to Maine. But I mean, I dated girls, so I'll have, but everybody seems to have a. You dated girls? I dated yeah. girls once. Cool. Long, Tell us about that. This is in the long. This before is your time. listener story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but each one I dated had at least one quirky thing that they completely didn't know or thought uh -huh. was different. For example, one girl I dated, I was at Gabriel Brothers or something, some secondhand clothing store with clothes that are kind of faulty. And I was like, oh, this shirt's cool. And she pulled off, she looked at the tag, and she goes, you can't get this. And I was like, why? She's like, it was made in the Banana Republic, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was awesome. Yeah, she was great. brilliant. She was like a valedictorian, but that one thing she just missed, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the last one I'll say is this other girlfriend I had, she was great, but she thought the reason we shot rockets at Cape Canaveral is because that was where the hole in the ozone layer was that you what? could escape. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that awesome? She, again, was a very smart person. I feel better but, about my Mississippi, Missouri right. mix Everyone's got their like weird, the, the, when you're talking to a friend, you're like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Everyone's got those Send things. Send them in. Be a fun episode. I went and ate thigh with my mom last week. What? What? What did you say? You ate thigh? No. This is a story about a girl from uh -huh. one of my friends. Oh, okay. And he was like, <laughs> okay. Wait, she said, I ate thigh <laughs> with yeah, my mom? Thigh. Like chicken thigh? No, like thigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That's amazing. He's like, I had thigh. It's definitely an Ohio mistake. I feel like you have a podcast of just of faux pas, just mm -hmm. like accidental things that are thought wrong. Definitely. Thinking wrong. All right, let's get to the corroboration. Let's take to the skies, boys. This okay. is vertical sky ship, three football fields long. December 22nd in Independence, Missouri, a friend and I had left a local shopping center and turned west on US Highway 24 when my buddy asked me if I knew what the three white lights were in the sky. As I looked up, I saw three bright white lights in a triangle formation Looking closer, I saw a faint outline of a triangular object in the sky. It was almost the same color as the night sky, almost a matte black in finish. The object was approximately three football fields in width across, and between two to three stories in height. That's massive. All sides were equal in size and slightly rounded. 
The object after we noticed it was stationary for about a minute and then started to bank left. In the blink of an eye, it quickly flattened out and headed west, following US-24 highway at a high rate of speed. I kept driving west and within about 20 to 30 seconds, it was no longer in sight. There was no sound of the object whatsoever. My friend and I are still in complete shock and amazement at what we saw. I have been around aircraft since I was a child and kept up with the new aircraft technology. At this time, there are no aircraft in the US or any other country with these capabilities or of this magnitude. That we know of. Yeah. It'd be secret space program. It's funny reminds you of the, the report that finally came out. Did it come out? Yeah. What, what was on Basically, it? they said there were, I think, 144 around there accounts that they looked at, and only one were they able to explain, which really? was a deflating balloon. They're pretty sure. 143 accounts were just not explainable. They said there's no evidence to show it's extraterrestrial, but they're not ruling it out. And they also said, could be China, could be Russia, but we don't have evidence for that either. So basically nothing. And I thought one of the most telling things was they said, could it be a U.S. project? It could be, but we don't have evidence for that. What's interesting to me is that the Pentagon made this report and the Pentagon statement is, could be a U.S. project. Wouldn't they be the ones that are supposed to know? Yeah, that's weird. I mean, obviously there's dark projects. Well, I was going to say too, the way our intelligence agencies work, there's so many bureaus exactly. now and they all seem to do their own thing. Compartmentalized. And they're all highly top secret. So it's possible CIA, NSA, who knows? Absolutely. Some black you know, aeronautics project. Something deep in the military industrial complex. Maybe one of those intelligence agencies has black projects. They have NASA. You know, they just have these oh, yeah. enormous- officers budgets that we don't know where they go. So it definitely could well, I be. I think it's likely. And my personal opinion is there's a mix of something ET or interdimensional or inner earth going on with probably black budget projects with reverse engineered craft. Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. But what I thought was fascinating about the fact that they made that statement, yeah. like an open admission, and maybe they've been sort of open about that before, but in such a large format of mm. saying, this could be a US project. And were the Pentagon telling you, we don't know. It's stated boldly. Didn't Bob Lazar say that the craft that he was working on or dealing mm -hmm. with was UFO? Yeah, it reverse engineered. Reverse. Yeah. I thought it, his impression was that it was extraterrestrial just because there was absolutely no way we would have an understanding of how it could work. Right. So they so were beyond. reverse engineering when yeah. he was a part of that. Which is still one of the most compelling, I think, accounts to this oh, yeah. day of someone that obviously has high level of expertise, proof to back up his claims his ability to understand the concepts and right and proof of the attempt at silencing him right thanks to george knapp he dug up that registry and if you guys are interested and you haven't heard it definitely check out season one towards the end we did a, a pretty deep dive on bob lazar and his account was that season one i think it was season one but no i think you're right to that point about the pentagon it's almost like could there be some white hats or just someone that's like we have to tell people a little like just to hint that it could be other U.S. projects. We're just the Pentagon. We don't know. Yeah, we're the. That's, yeah. that's like hinting that scary that it is deeper and darker and more, like you said, compartmentalized mm -hmm. than, the, slip American, it in. than the American people would. Because right, usually yeah. they want to present a cohesive nation, right? Right. But it's almost like that they're they're throwing those little tidbits Maybe out. Maybe that was the whole point. Maybe to like let people know, hey, this we don't even know exactly complex. what's going on in our own country, right? As far as potential. Projects. Side projects. And maybe it's us and we're just mm -hmm. not telling you. That's a yeah. subtle thing because I haven't heard anyone else. They've reported on, oh, it could be ETs. They're not saying. But that's interesting because I haven't heard that. Someone mentioned that specifically that right. they said it could be U.S. It's written in there with everything else just kind of in passing. But it's a really telling point. And again, overall, the report comes out how we all predicted. Yeah. We're not going to learn anything. Right. Not in particular. The only thing we know. It's still just a question mark. Is that it's a question. Yeah. Okay, so last corroboration here. And then we'll get to Bailey's winged humanoid. Jeremy, you want to read this one? Sure. Again. This comes from Independence, Missouri. I was driving home from work about 3.30 a.m., October 28, 2007. I was headed north on the Blue Ridge Cutoff and turned right onto Blue Ridge Boulevard. About the third house on the left had a ham radio antenna. Right on top was a triangular-shaped UFO hovering right on top of the antenna. I pulled over for a few seconds. It was black with no numbers. I thought at first that it might be attached to the antenna. However, the antenna was not bending. I continued down Blue Ridge Boulevard towards my house. It was facing a westward direction. When I got to the corner of Blue Ridge Boulevard and Cedar Avenue, there was a second one hovering just above the treetop on Cedar Avenue, which was a few feet north of my car. 
I pulled to the side to observe the object. It was triangular just like the first one. It was just hovering in a stationary position. Both were black in color and appeared to be made of stealth composite type material. It was completely triangular, not like the F-22 which has some other shapes on edge. I sat there in my car for about 20 minutes watching it. The bottom was smooth. After looking at the bottom for about 10 minutes, I noticed a couple of very faint circular areas, which I assume were where landing gear was. The object did not move up or down at all the whole time I was watching. I was trying to figure out how it was able to hover. Finally, I rolled down my window and listened to see if I could hear something. I was barely able to hear anything except for what sounded like an engine revving at extremely high RPM. The thing would not move while I was sitting there, so I decided to circle the block to get a different view. By the time I circled the block, it was moving in a westerly, slightly north direction at about approximately 25 or 30 miles per hour at the same height as it was hovering, approximately 30 feet off the ground. I could not see a cockpit of any kind from my angle's view. It was not a helicopter. Okay, what's interesting to me about this is stealth bombers. That would be the closest thing I can imagine, like the Delta shape mm -hmm. craft that we have. I don't, think they, I don't think they can hover, or at least they couldn't in 2007, whenever this is. Because that'd be my first thought. If I was going to try to explain it, it would be the stealth bomber. I've seen those go over. They make a kind of a warbling uh -huh. sound. Well, there's a TR-3B. That's the classic triangular shape. Right. But also hovering over someone's house right above the ham radio antenna is just an eerie visual. And yeah. the fact that there were two there and they were just sitting above people's homes. <laughs> it's super creepy mm -hmm. to think about. You know, are they taking people? Are they just listening? This reminds you of Ryan's story where, or Shane's story where, is this an abduction scenario? Mm -hmm. This guy happens to come upon. For That's some creepy. reason, they're not cloaked completely. He can make out the outline in this matte black. Interesting. Creepy. Yeah. Very creepy. Also reminds me of hippos. Sure. I don't know why, but it reminds me of a large mammal. I don't know, this sounds weird, but I picture like there's a there's one maybe like a, a small predator in an area mm -hmm. and then say elephants, large animals come in and they just kind of like sit on it. You know what I mean? Like they'll just kind of block it from their young. They can't attack it, but they'll just be this imposing force. It just reminds me of these crafts. I mean, this is a really weird analogy. It is. But do you know what I mean? Like these things hover and they're just exude dominance, just oh, right, sitting right. on top. Mm -hmm. Maybe this guy was blasting out of like a conspiracy podcast about aliens oh. and they just sat on it like, oh, okay. no, you're Like not. whoever had the radio was the predator yeah. or the invader or whatever. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Weird. I know. Weird analogy. John's just looking at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps it up for uh, the listener stories I have, but you want to finish it up with a pretty incredible account by Bailey, right? Yes. This comes from Bailey. It's a classic winged humanoid encounter and this will take a into the expansion, but let's share this story here because it is fascinating. So this also takes place in Missouri. What's interesting about this is like you have the classic flying humanoid and then you have some supernatural elements to it as well. Fascinating correlations and corroborations with other accounts I found in the area that we'll get into, but I'll bullet point those so you can see how they align and we might tell some in the expansion. So this happened in June of 2019 in Joplin, Missouri, between 7 and 8 p.m., driving from Springfield, Missouri to Kansas City, Missouri. She was driving, and this is important, she was driving a 2005 Chevy Blazer, the two-door, the S10 body style, and she uses that as a tool for measuring this thing later on. Smart. So normally she drives this route taking Highway 13 through Bolivar and Clinton, but on this night, there were tornado warnings. Again, tornadoes. That, well, this is like, I think it's on the edge of Tornado Alley. And so her stepfather told her to go through Joplin instead. And that sets the scene. <laughs> It was not dark yet. It usually gets dark between 8.30 and 9 this time of year, but it was somewhere between 7 and 8. While the tornadoes weren't going to be in my route, there were scattered thunderstorms. At the time of my sighting, it was in between one storm and just before another. I mention this for a couple reasons. One, because I think there's some correlation between the electric charges of a thunderstorm and the ability to see this creature. I have no idea why I suspect this. And two, I acknowledge that while it was not dark, it was gray due to the storm. I was driving down the highway going a little slower than the limit of 70 due to the wetness of the road. If I were to guess, I'd say 50 or 55 miles an hour. I did not see the creature until he was pretty much right over me. I say he because that's the feeling I got. The creature was flying over me perpendicular to my direction and over to my right into the wooded area next to the highway. 
The sunroof was closed, but I had the shade pulled back so it was just glass for me to look through. And this thing came so close over top of my vehicle that I could see, close up, the texture of his wings through my driver's window and sunroof. Well. I do not remember any feet or arms and I did not see the head. The only part of the anatomy I saw besides the wings was a small quadrant of the torso region. I'm guessing it was somewhere above the navel. They have navels? If there were even an, if there was even a navel. And before the pectoral region is, I did not see anything like human nipples. The wingspan of this creature had to be between 12 and 16 feet. I mean, I'm not great with measurements, but the creature easily could have had the tip of one wing down on the ground and in front of my car and the other tip on the ground behind my car, providing it had been in park and it were not flying. And remember, this is tip to tip, perpendicular to me, not parallel. My point is, it was like my car was entirely enveloped in his wings, even though it was for a split second. So she's describing if the thing took its wings perpendicular to the way she was driving, the wings could cover from her hood to the back of her car. Wow. That's how long this thing was, so 12 to 16 feet. But what I find the most interesting is the apparent control the creature seemed to have over my state of mind. As this was happening, I was not scared. I was so completely calm. Now, not calm as in soothed or comforted, but calm as if I were just looking at a field of cows or something instead of a huge creature that's supposedly not supposed to exist in our dimension. I know I saw the wings with my real and sober eyes, but his head, I believe, I only saw in my mind shortly after he passed over and via some kind of control or telepathy, as if he was planting it there. The head was less human than the body, it was kind of elongated triangle or diamond shaped. Not exactly, but in an exaggerated way. Anyway, I remained unaffected by my sighting until I had gotten about 30 to 50 miles more down the road. Weird. That's when the holy shit and what the fucks started. <laughs> Pardon my language, I'm gonna assume you've heard it before. Further down the road, I pulled over. I wanted to see if anyone in the area had seen anything like I just had but I didn't want to describe it in my Google search as to not manipulate the results. So I just Googled cryptid sightings near Joplin, Missouri. One moment. Here's what I found. Interestingly, the search yielded a bunch of articles about children seeing what they described as butterfly people who protected them from the rubble during the devastating 2011 tornado which demolished the Joplin area. That'll be a fun one to get into. Yeah. I want to point out one distinction in this creature's defense. I was never terrified. Even after the encounter when I realized what happened, I got absolutely zero evil or demonic feelings associated with him. And I have been proven over time to be able to really trust my intuition involving the supernatural. I wanted to mention this because the sightings I've heard talk about people screaming like lunatics and being traumatized at their core or calling it a demon. Perhaps they are seeing something different than I did, or perhaps they just haven't had to cope with other paranormal or worldview-shattering experiences and are thusly more threatened. Yeah, so fascinating account. So the thing with the Bailey's kind of mentioning there at the end is she's had frequent experiences with the paranormal in her past. Oh. And we talked about this before, the idea that some people are just kind of magnets, mm -hmm. and that's the way she describes it. She feels like she's been kind of a magnet, and oftentimes it's with other witnesses that are there. That have encountered things with her. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It'd be cool to get some corroboration from people she's with for some of the accounts. Yeah, because she refers to herself as a contactee, but as far as humanoid cryptids go, other than seeing a glimmer man, which is a crazy story in itself, this is the only one that she's seen in Joplin. Quick question about that. The creature, it didn't sound much like a humanoid, a winged humanoid. It just sounded like a large winged creature. Well, she saw the torso, which looked humanoid to her, and then, of course, the wings. However, the torso appeared... That was obviously humanoid to her. It said pectoral region, so you got your pecs going. But she didn't see nipples or a navel. Yeah, maybe a giant bat. Maybe the nipples were covered. You know, <laughs> they're trying to be a little <laughs> I respectful. Like, I like the gesture there, covered. Like with Band-Aids. Yeah, like it was performing or later tassels? at the VMAs or something. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> that was a dumb comment, sorry. <laughs> this reminds me of... It almost reminds me of like angels, going back to angels again. These kind of descriptions of entities that aren't born. Right, because mm -hmm. you you need nipples and navels when you're born. You mm. need the, to connect you to your mother and to if you're a mammal. Yeah, if you're a mammal. Why do you need nipples to feed 
You're young. Oh, you're talking about a female. Yeah, yeah. Well, in males, we don't know. We got them because they... We have no use for our nipples. It is odd. Yeah. I guess it's because it's like the last thing I mean, thing you could tell, change. like, yeah, there's a cold breeze running outside. Some men lactate. They're a little more sensitive than mm-hmm. the rest. Yeah, and I don't like they're, that. They're, yeah, they're really useless pieces. Like, they're sensitive of, in a way that's just, like, it feels weird. Yeah, I don't like them. It's not pleasant. I'm not a fan of Maybe some men dig it. Anyways. My nipples. Point Although is... it would look weird if we didn't have them. <laughs> exactly. Like not having eyebrows. Yeah, it's, it, they're meant for reproductive purposes. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing us without... <laughs> Nipples like, and no yeah. eyebrows. <laughs> just like little. We'll, just we look subtle. like LL Cool J. <laughs> what? He has no eyebrows. Remember we talked about that oh, on the, that's right. the expansion episode. He looks like a ninja turtle. Exactly. So he looks like a ninja turtle because he doesn't have the eyebrows. I think he ha- he doesn't have eyebrows. He's a very handsome man. I'm, don't get me wrong. He just looks like a ninja turtle. Um, <laughs> Googling LL Cool J eyebrows? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> Dude, I swear if you Google that, it's one of the first things that pops up. Oh my god, you're right. Okay. Anyways, beautiful man. Um, <laughs> Sorry. The first response to this prompt is LL Cool J's face and head getting weirder <laughs> from the blemish, whatever that is. Okay. I love LL Cool J. We're not knocking on that. No, I love LL Cool J too. You love, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. Let's, okay, back to Bailey Stewart. My point, without the nipples and the navel, I just that got me thinking when John was questioning that, is that... He used to have eyebrows. Yes, he did. <laughs> is that in the Garden of Eden, the idea that if you were to find... What happened to if you were to somehow find Adam and Eve's body intact or whatever, you, mm-hmm. they would not have navels because they weren't born, right? They were created. And it just reminds me of the idea of the angel or people refer to these, especially in Joplin, when the tornado happened, they were seeing these angels. Angels wouldn't have navels. They wouldn't yeah. have nipples. You know who else wouldn't? Isn't that interesting though? It is, but you know who else wouldn't? Pterodactyls. And I think this might be the case of a, an ancient pterosaur. I don't know. Because there's tons of those sightings. I, okay, but uh, taking Bailey at her word, mm-hmm. seeing it as a human thorax... Or uh, the torso area, thorax is insect. Uh, human torso, we can get her opinion on that, but I don't know, maybe not human, but humanoid. And it, as we'll get into the expansion, corroborating accounts, they saw a fuller version of it where it had long legs, muscular calves. So these other accounts, I'll bullet point these here real quick for you, and we'll get into some of these in the expansion. You can play some fast montage music over it. Turkey Creek Flying Humanoid, 2018, two hours from Bailey's sighting, a year before. A woman named Sheila in Humansville, Interesting name for yeah. what she saw. Wings about the same span, 15 feet. Said it could have enveloped her town and country van. Had human-esque looking legs hanging down, hmm. right? But the wings were the same, leathery. Cape Giradu, sorry, I'm not pronouncing that right, Missouri, 2020. So the year after, five hours away from where Bailey was, two different accounts of the same creature in this town. Giant wings, dark black brown body, same kind of thing. Scrawny legs, muscular, the calf. Its head, she added, was, quote, really little and round, kind of pointed but round. Oh, Very similar to diamond shape. Bailey's with the diamond shape at the point at the top. And the last one here I have referenced, this is an account we will do in the expansion. It's two duck hunters, a father and son, saw a large flying humanoid five hours away from Bailey in 2016, so three years earlier. They were duck hunting in West Alton, Missouri. Wingspan approximately 12, 15 feet, exact same size that Bailey suggested. Yeah. Head small compared to the body and kind of shaped like a football with a slight point at the top just like Bailey not knowing this encounter she had the same visual representation in her mind of what that head would have looked like kind of diamond shaped elongated like what a football so that's just interesting this is all happening in Missouri guys if you want to see a flying humanoid I say go to Missouri Dinosaur. you will find it or him and let us know how that goes but we're going to get into some of the stories in the expansion we're going to talk about the tornado the tragedy and the butterfly people that we're seeing is this the same thing is it a different phenomena i don't know we're going to find out wow, it's going to be fast, interesting jeremy very fast sorry i was just trying to i wanted to get through some of that information before we left cool all right let's do the stinger okay yeah, we got a stinger for dj and then we'll wrap up with the thank yous yes yeah, so and we got some new expansion members right, to call out we got a stinger for dj finally what dj, DJ Benson, it's for you buddy Escaping California cause he hates it. <laughs> so true. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> He's eternal. That was great, John. He's eternal. Good work on that one. Well, that was really good. Thank Thanks. you, DJ, for your support. Yes. You beautiful man yes. and your friendship. And good luck with your trip. Yes. Leaving uh, closed down California for brighter, bigger mm-hmm. pastures. Hugs to Alyssa and Scarlett. Good luck, sir, on your journey. Off with you. All right. That was great, John. Thanks. Yeah, that was really um, good. We got some thank yous to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this Strange Listener Stories episode. It was one of my favorites so far. Yeah. To hear some more, go ahead and check our catalog of episodes. We've got, I think this is number eight. So we've got seven more rich story episodes for you to hear. Um, And we want to thank some other special people right now, our new expansion members. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Thank you to James Wood. Hey, I remember him. James Woods. That sounds like the actor guy. Yeah. Not him. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Isabel Johnson. All right, Isabella, thank you. Yes. Alex. Excellent. Yes. L-E-X. Alex, interesting. That's a cool name. Sounds like an airport. Yes. Uh, thank you to Corey Cooper. Welcome in, Cor. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yes. Come on in. Cooper thank- Trooper. <laughs> Cooper Trooper. Bianca. Hey. Hey, Bianca. Bianca. Thanks for being here. Thank you to Ella Light. Shine some light on our hole. She has a light body. I mean, you know, the belief hole. Tonight. Okay, weird. Thank you to Damon Carter. Yes. Damon. Thanks again, Damon. Thank you to Anthony Peterson. Patterson. Patterson. Yes. Oh, sorry. Jim can't read or <laughs> Get a writer, pay the price. <laughs> Thank you to Anthony Patterson. Good Welcome. to have you here. Yes. Ooh, Mad Max, finally in the hole. Mad, Mad Max. Max. We've been waiting for you. That was my AOL username in like He can help us if the world ends. Yes, he's yes. very capable. Thank you to Teresa Birch. Like hey, a, Teresa. A birch tree. Yes. Sturdy and strong. <laughs> Thank you to Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. One, two, punch. <laughs> Combo. Thank you to Dakota. All right. It's hey, a Dakota. State. That is a state. I remember that one. Thank you to Jason Sloan. All right. Jason Sloan. Taking out loans of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Waxwing Slain. Waxwing Slain. That is, is that an real? awesome name. That is an awesome that name. That can't be real. It sounds like a superhero. Waxwing? That flies. It's the name of the flying human. Yeah. Thank you, Waxwing Slain. Thanks for being here. Cool Excellent. name. Yes. Thank you to Jenny McGillivary. McGillivary. Welcome to the hole. Bouncy name. I like that. Thanks for being here. We love you. Melodic. Yes! Gustavo Campos. All right. Gustavo. Welcome to the hole. Welcome in, my man. God, there's some zest in that one. I like that. Gustavo. Excellent. Welcome to Jace Scholler. Welcome to Jace. Jace. Yes. I mean, welcome, Jace. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm giving welcome to Jace. Okay. Yes. Welcome, Jace. Yes. Good to have welcome you. Welcome in. Yes. Jessica Butler. Come on in. All right. Come on. The door's open for you, Jessica. We left We left it open. We left some cookies on the counter. You may have those and then buckle them to us. Munch, munch. Excellent. Welcome to Jason Valentine. Welcome, Jason Valentine. Jason Valentine. Has been communicating with us. Oh, he's a regular mm-hmm. talker in the hall. We love him. Every day is a Valentine's Day with Jason. It's a little <laughs> card opening up and saying hello. How are you? Thank you for joining you the hall. You are our Valentine. Yes. Thank you to Lori Sillis. Yes. Right, hey, Lori. Lori. Yes. I feel silly when I think of you, Lori. Yes. All right, Brittany. Thank you Excellent. for joining. Welcome, Brittany. Welcome Brittany. to the hall. Come on in. Welcome to Michael Salaturo. Yes. Stephen. Stephen Michael Salaturo. Oh, man, yes. I'm just missing names You're here. You're not doing great. Stephen Michael Salaturo. Thank you so much, my friend. Welcome to the hole. We appreciate your support. Meet Corey Marlowe. Come on down. Corey, what is up? Yes. Uh, remember that Christmas night <laughs> with Charles Dickens? Never mind. What? Yes. Marlowe. Excellent. Oh, my goodness. Okay. okay. Desmond Sanchez. Sanchez. Yes, yes, Thank you, Desmond, yes, for joining yes, the hole. Yes, Welcome. Yes, yes. Karen Cleary. Karen you Cleary. Are one in a million. It's clear. Don't steer Cleary of Karen Cleary. She's clearly she's, she's a good best. friend to have. Danny Thank you. the Pool Man. Danny, Danny Pool Man. That's yes. an awesome. I name. want a pool yes. so he can come and clean it. Danny Pullman. Welcome, my friend. Lena M. Lena M. Hey, yes. Lena. Mm-mm, yes. Good. Salutations, yes. Lena. All right. Almost done here. Terry Zorko. Zorko. Yes. Is he a yes. magician? Fantastic. The great Illusionist. Zorko. The great Zorko. <laughs> Welcome to the whole buddy. Welcome. Oh, and we have a Ooh. special, special, special supporter, Manette. Oh, Manette. Manette. Yes. yes. Manette, thank you. She's the game. You guys saw our live stream. Uh, or it wasn't on the live stream yet. On our Instagram, we posted an amazing picture of this alien Mona oh, Proxima. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Beautiful painting. You're you guys should check that out. Great artist. Thank you so much. Yes. That was real sweet. Excellent. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. All right. We got through the list yes. this time. All right. Thank you guys so much yes. for... For being here for supporting us uh those of you that can't be expansion members and can't get all the awesome extra content yet you can support us through reviews that really really helps share with your friends share the show it's the only way we're really going to grow is word of mouth that's the best way to do it keep spreading the whole putting it out also, there do we have the amazon link on 
Yeah, I don't know how effective that is. One way you might be able to help us, guys, we have a recommended books list uh, that we get a little bit of change. If you're looking to buy some new books or stuff, come to our website, click on it's the like links. A, the affiliate thingy. Yeah, it's like an affiliate Amazon link. We don't get much, but it's something. If you're going to buy any books, uh, do it there. Support oh, us. special thanks also. Last thanks I want to give is to... Uh, Fancy crafts? Spicy crafts? Oh, fancy crafts. Fancy crafts for the awesome illustration you did. Very cool. Anybody gets inspired and wants to send in an awesome... Uh, fan art. <laughs> fan art. We're making a page for that on our site as well. Yeah, so. we've had some great fan art from you guys sending in it, so we're about to build that page. Also, highlighted artists, just people we talk to that send us stuff on Instagram. Also, possible merch. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Come join us in the expansion if you feel saucy enough. Yeah, let's hear yeah. about some butterfly people. Some other flying humanoids. And some creepier stuff, too. There's some creepy stuff in there as well. Oh, you so. got some dark flyers, huh? Well, anything flying that's kind of bat-like reptilian, it's going to be a little freaky. Close so. encounters? It'll be an interesting uh, balance there. Awesome. All right, guys, until next time, we will see you on... The Belief Hole. The, the Belief Hole. hole. Joplin, Missouri, like I said, where the... Uh, Named after Janice? I knew you were going to say that. I just knew it was going to be... It's just low-hanging fruit, John. <laughs> I just keep thinking that every time you say the word. Well, interestingly, her great-grandfather was the founder of Joplin, Missouri, so good. you had a good call. Really? No. I have no idea. Probably You not. stinky boo. I'm a stinky boo. <laughs> uh, okay. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> oh my. That's strange. That's staying in there. You're going to get a girlfriend. I'm a stinky boo. You have to cut that out.